Hi everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're going to be taking a look at how to replace the transmission fluid and filter for a 2005 F-150. This also applies to expeditions around this era as well as some excursions that are equipped with a 5.4 liter V8. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, here we are underneath our F-150 here. Now, you can see that most of these bolts are fairly exposed and pretty easy to get at. There's these two tricky ones in the back. They're going to take a little bit of uh, swivelly and engineering to get to. So we're going to remove those ones first. And then what we're going to do is leave bolts in the corners, right? So I'm going to leave a bolt back here and one up here and one in that corner, one in that corner. And then we're going to loosen it down and then it's going to start leaking all over us making a big mess. So we're going to get a pan ready. And then what we can do is remove this bolt and that bolt fully. I will dump the pan down this way and hopefully all the fluid will get all over me in the ground and avoid the pan completely. And then we can remove the last two in the back. So that's the order of operations we're going to be doing today. I'm actually wrong. The uh, back two are very easy to get to via a nice long extension and a 10 millimeter socket. And these aren't even in very tight. There we go. We just uh, remove these two from the back and we're going to leave this one here and uh, go around like I said earlier. All right, this next step is the potentially messy one. So I'm going to move the camera kind of out of the way. This camera's pretty expensive and I don't want to ruin it with ATF. Also, I want to mention this is the time to don your eye protection. ATF in your eye burns like crazy. Ask me how I know. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lower the front of the pan down into our uh, catch basin. All right, let's so remove these uh, front bolts here. We can uh, do our best to try to remove them evenly. There we go, already starting to go. And we're gonna wait until this uh, flow slows down a little bit, that way it's less in the pan when we remove it. All right, here comes the exciting part. If you happen to have a helper with you, someone you can rely on to hold the pan up while you take the bolts out, it makes the job a lot uh, less messy, that's for sure. So what's basically holding tension on the pan now is the two bolts we left in the rear. So as we loosen those, the pan is gonna drop in the front. So that will give us a controlled spill. That's looking perfect. Alright, our pan's only holding on with one bolt, so we can go ahead and remove that the rest of the way. There we go, and now our pan doesn't weigh a ton either, so that's easier to remove. Because if you remove it with a ton of fluid in it, it's kind of awkward and ungainly and you might drop it on yourself or the floor. So letting it drain out is kind of uh, the easy way to go. So now that we got the pan off of our transmission here, exposing the filter and valve body, I'm going to let it sit here and drip before I remove the filter because the more gravity does the work, the less I have to do, right? So we're gonna go over to the workbench and uh, clean up our pan. All right, so we got our transmission pan here on uh, some shop towels, and we're gonna grab some shop towels and clean it out as best we can because we don't want any excess metal in here or any kind of general grease or any kind of ickiness. And uh, you can see over here in this bottom right of the pan, that's actually a magnet that's removable, and if you touch it you can see what has been collected on it it's a very 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 fine film of metal and other ick um, and that needs to be cleaned quite well and you can remove it and clean it uh, individually but um, we're going to use carburetor spray here we can see that this is actually 
came from your transmission. That's what the inside of your transmission would look like without this magnet, so that needs to be really clean for future use. All right, our pan looks pretty clean, but we need to make sure that this surface around here, the mating surface for the transmission, is clean as well, and we're gonna use carburetor spray for that too. And if your gasket was stuck on there and you had to like peel it off and there's big chunks of it, uh, scrape that off with a metal scraper or a um, gasket gun. That's what I like to use. I've used it in the past um, and it works great. So I'm gonna make sure this is nice and clean and then we can move on to our magnet. If the transmission had ever been serviced before, which is my suspicion because the color of the fluid was okay, um, they never did this step, which is to clean the magnet, and I would argue that's one of the more important steps. There's really only three steps. There we go. That's now pretty darn clean, and go back in the pan. Make sure it's nice and seated in there, not going to go anywhere. And this is ready back for the truck. The next thing I want to go over is the gasket. This gasket came off of the pan, and on the pan it actually says that the gasket is renewable or reusable. It even says pan is equipped with reusable gasket. Now you have to take that with a grain of salt for when the truck was made and what kind of mileage it has on it and what condition this gasket is in. This gasket of mine is in pretty darn good shape. It actually looks fairly new. Um, but if it had like big cracks or if it had stuck to the pan at all, then I would uh, use the new gasket that comes along with the kit. And I've, I've shown that on the channel a few times up here in the card. There's a great video on that, which is, I mean, basically the exact same thing we're doing today, but on a little bit older truck. And uh, we didn't reuse the gasket because it was total garbage. This one's in pretty darn good shape, and you want to look at that to make sure there's no cracks or bites out of it or anything that's uh, too major. So uh, make sure you go over this with like your finger or like a flashlight to make sure there's no cracks because if it leaks, you're doing the whole job again. So this is the transmission filter we're using today. It's an AC Delco TF302. I've left a link down below in the description for you. And I know I can hear you pounding your keyboard from here that it's not a Ford Motorcraft part, and you're correct. Other OEMs, quality OEMs, such as AC Delco, uh, can make transmission filters and gaskets for differentiating, differentiating transmissions. Um, and you'd be surprised how much part crossover there is between Ford and GM. So if you were to put on a new gasket, you'd want to make sure that it is going to fit your application. So if you were to use this gasket, you want to lay down some silicone rubber and put this on and put some silicone rubber on top of it. Uh, again, in the card and description, there's a great link to that. But today, we're going to be doing what the pan says and reusing the original gasket. I don't think it'll have a problem. And oh, if your transmission was leaking to begin with from the seal, don't use the seal again. I know it's kind of straightforward, but you know, this stuff, I want to cover all my bases. So if this had a leak to begin with, uh, like the prior use, like the other video I have showed off in the past, uh, don't want to use this, you want to use the new one, but our transmission's bone dry, so this seal is probably okay. Um, but if we're talking about longevity, putting this one on with some silicone rubber is probably going to be the best bet due to this gasket being as old as the truck. So that is something to think about. All right, so now we can remove our transmission filter from the valve body and look around whenever you're doing this job on uh, any other truck because sometimes there's a bolt or a clip holding uh, the filter on not in this application there's nothing holding it to the valve body so not in this application so uh, you can just peel it off of the valve body there and then try not to make a big mess all over yourself like I just did the next thing I want to talk about is on the oil filter itself here you see how there's no o-ring or seal right here there should be like a bright orange o-ring right here so what that means is it's still up here in the valve body. In fact, I can see it just a little bit. So that is stuck in there and we need to remove that with like a hook tool or something. So let's do that. That is something you have to be careful of because if you leave this seal in here and you put two in there, it's just like having two seals on an oil filter. It's gonna gush and leak. It's not gonna filter. Your transmission's not gonna work. So it won't build enough pressure. You won't go anywhere and uh, you'll be doing the job again. So I have the camera zoomed in the hole where the, uh, Transmission filter goes into the valve body and uh, you can see that o-ring is stuck up in there. So 
We're going to use our hook tool here to pry it loose. Now, if you have really strong fingers or something, maybe you can just get it out, but uh, I've always found the reason they're stuck is because they're well stuck. There we go. Freaking thing. All right, so there we go. That uh, seal is out with it. You can use your finger to go around in there and make sure that didn't leave any uh, surprise for you. Like any uh, filter or uh, like any gasket material left in there, you want to make sure that's nice and smooth to get ready to accept the new uh, seal. The next thing I'm going to do is clean off the valve body surface here. You can see that there's a bit of grime and crud on there, and um, the better, the more clean the inside of here is, the better off you are. So I'm going to take some time and do that before we put the new, new filter in. And before we put the new uh, seal on. And before we put the pan back on, you want to make sure that this surface here is very clean where my middle finger is. You want to make sure all of that is clean all the way around. Uh, use some carburetor spray, clean it off with a rag, and make sure that the mating surfaces are totally clean so you don't have any chance of leaking. So here is our new unit. You can see that the O-ring is pre-installed there on our stock one. It came off and was up in the valve body. We had to retrieve it. And we can see that they are exactly the same, the same dimensions. Look at that. Look at the filter material difference. This thing's filthy. So I'm glad we're doing this job. And uh, what we can also do is take a little bit of lubricant. There's plenty of ATF on the old filter. And uh, put it around this O-ring. You, you can also use a teeny bit of motor oil if you want to. Just some sort of lubricating agent on here to make sure that the seal doesn't go cockeyed when you're trying to put it up or like peel down onto this uh, little housing here. You just want to make sure that that goes kind of goes funk right into place. So make sure this has a little film of ATF oil on it and you're good to go. All right, so we got our uh, new filter here and it goes in just like our old one came out. And there is no uh, bolt or anything to kind of hold it in there. It's basically just the seal that holds it. So you want to make sure that that's oh, nice and in its home. And it's okay if it droops down a teeny bit like this, not the end of the world. Just make sure that this is as pressed in as you can uh, reasonably without crushing the housing. And we're ready for the pan. So when you're putting your pan on, you want to make sure that it goes on as straight as possible to not disturb the gasket. And you gotta make sure that the gasket is sitting perfectly to where it needs to go. We'll put one bolt in like that, and then we're gonna do the cross bolt from it. Because once that gasket is in, from the cross sections, like this is cool because we can kind of feel it. And we'll put the bolt in. Now we know the gasket is in the right spot because the cross sections match up. There we go. So now we have these two bolts in. You can even look inside of the holes to make sure that the gasket material is lined up perfectly and concentric with the pan hole and the transmission thread. So what we want to do now is replace our bolts that were removed earlier and we want to, I'm just going to put it in the finger tight right now and then after that I'm going to go around and tighten them in uh, as much of an X pattern as I can so that way the pan will sit down evenly on the mating surface because um, if it doesn't it could cause a leak and that's kind of the opposite of what we want here and our torque spec today is 11 foot pounds and if you don't have a torque wrench that's completely understandable uh, yeah just a little snug's good they're 10 millimeters so they, they're not going to be ultra hulk tight or anything they're going to be you know a little on the looser side and you don't want to uh, hulk tight these out either because that'll cause the gasket to swedge and uh, cause leaks. So it doesn't want to be too tight. Um, but again, you don't necessarily need, absolutely need a torque wrench at every single juncture while doing automotive maintenance. So. All right, now we can grab our torque wrench, 11 foot-pounds, but uh, again, if you don't have one, it's okay. Just try to do it in as crisscrossing pattern as you can. And there we go. That's what it should look like. All right, so the next thing we can do is remove our transmission dipstick, which has our fluid recommendation on it, which is Mercon 5. And I have some of that here in the shop today. 
I got the Motorcraft stuff. I've left a link down below in the description. Now, I think they still make Mercon 5 at this point, but maybe they won't in the future. If they don't make Mercon 5 anymore, and you're watching this like five years in the future, uh, from today, which is 2019, December, uh, and they don't make Mercon 5 anymore, typically the new Mercons can go in the old one, except for LV. I don't think that's backward compatible, but uh, if there's a Mercon 6, it can go into Mercon 5, and Mercon 5 can go to Mercon 4. So that's uh, the numerical ones are backwards compatible, but I don't think you can use this as transfer case fluid. Yeah, it even says don't use in transfer cases like you could with old uh, ATFs. So that's why on this truck, if you're looking for a transfer case fluid, uh, Mercon LV is actually the transfer case fluid because they stopped making XJ12 or whatever it was, XT12 or something like that. So very, very interesting, I know, but you have to know your fluid specifications. We can go ahead and remove our dipstick and surprise, doesn't show any fluid on it. Wow. Like we drained it. And we're here in place with our transmission funnel here. Now, uh, I'm just gonna put, mm, let's put three in and check it because uh, it's really easy to add. It's pretty difficult to subtract. So it's gonna at least take, you know what, let's put two in and check it just to be sure. And yes, I'm putting fluid in and checking while the engine is not running because we don't wanna run the pump dry. We wanna make sure there's a decent amount of fluid for it to pick up. Go ahead and check how much fluid we have. I know probably it's gonna take more than two, I can tell you that right now, but I just wanna make sure that we're not completely over full or something. So I know it's kinda of hard to see. And you might say, oh, it's in the do not add, but you can see that there's a bunch of gap here. It's not completely full in here, so it's gonna need, uh, so it's gonna need quite a bit more fluid. I know it says do not add up here, but that's just because that rubbed against the dipstick. There's no like majority mark, so you wanna see that it's like all the way full up here. It'll be like a solid bar, but we're not there yet. So I've just checked it after adding three quarts, and you can see that, yeah, there's some up here on the hot side and the do not add. That's just scraping off the side of the dipstick tube. What we can see is that on the engine, my thumb there, see how it's nice and full with all the dots, and up here it's not. So we know it's kind of on the lower end of cold. So we can go ahead and add like a, maybe like a third quart more. Okay, so I'm at about three and a third quarts, and uh, we're just at the very top of cold. So that is perfect. Now we can start the truck and let it run for a little bit. Uh, don't put it in gear, just leave it in park for right now. And we wanna check it when it's uh, warm and uh, make sure that it is nice and the fluid is uh, kind of more towards the top of the hot zone, but not past it. So, you know, between the edge of the T and the end of the uh, hot zone, so like right where my thumb is, is where kind of where you want the sweet spot there. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we let the truck run for a couple of minutes. We go ahead and uh, check our dip here. Whenever you're checking transmission fluid, just for future reference, when you haven't just drained it and replaced it, uh, always do it while the truck is running and then park. Yeah, see how much it dropped down? It's not even registering anymore, so it needs a uh, fair minimum, at least another quart. And there we go. That's what it should look like while well, it's nice and hot and running and park. Um, that's how much fluid you should be having. It looks like I nailed it perfectly at uh, very nearly four quarts. Um, but it's just better to add a little bit and keep checking rather than just relying on me for the exact measurement because it may not be 100%. There might be a mid-year refresh and you just can't count on that. So you have to check it yourself. So that is how to replace your transmission fluid and filter for an 05 F-150. Uh, all applicable links are down below in the description. It's fairly simple and straightforward and a great way to save some money without handing over a bunch of cash to a mechanic to do the work for you. Uh, this is definitely something you could do uh, in a garage type situation with the help of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time.